Woodworkers from YouTube, what is going on? It's great to see you again. My name is Mark and I'm from Woodworker Source. Today, red oak, white oak, what's the difference? Why would you care what the difference is? How do you decide which one's right for you? Let's see where this takes us today, shall we? Let's go. The name oak is like a brand name, just like Ford or Nike, and the specific species under oak are just like models under those brands. Like Ford, for example, has the F-150, they've got the Fiesta, they've got the Mustang. Those are all just specific models under that brand. Oak's a lot like that. So around the world, there are like 600 species of oak, and that grouping of oak is in a genus called Quercus, and all species of oak have a two-part botanical name, red oak, for example, Quercus rubra, and all 600 species of oak have a botanical name a lot like that. But let's not get too carried away about botany today. So there are about 90 species of oak that grow throughout North America, and then really when it comes down to it, there's only about two species that really matter to woodworkers, red oak and white oak. Okay, let's start with red oak. This might be the most plentiful hardwood tree in North America. You're gonna see this in a lot of kitchen cabinets, restaurant interiors, flooring, even some American-made furniture. And it grows largely around the Great Lakes area and as far south as Georgia and Alabama. So combine that with the other characteristics of the wood. It's nice and hard, it's dense, it's durable, yet it machines pretty good and it stains really nicely. You can make it any color you want. Then it should start really coming together why red oak is so prevalent, why it's so widespread in use. It just nails a sweet spot between really good supply and really good characteristics. So of course you might be thinking, well, red oak's not that nice, I don't like it. Well. But the biggest complaint about red oak is that it's not as nice to work with as like cherry or walnut. Red oak can and does splinter and chip out, particularly when cross cutting, but it's workable. It's not that bad. It's just not quite as nice as walnut or cherry and woods like that. Now don't get tricked by the name red oak. That's not a description of the wood. It's, it actually comes from the colloquial name of the tree and the tree is called red oak. The tree is called red oak because that's the color that the leaves change in autumn. They turn red. That's kind of a tricky thing to know about hardwoods is that if there's a color in the name of the wood, it doesn't necessarily describe the color of the wood. It's most likely about an aspect of the tree. Just a little trivia for you. The big question is why would you pick red oak when you're choosing a wood for a project? Basically, we've already established that it's good and hard, it's durable, machine's okay, but red oak also happens to be really affordable. It's not a bad price at all. It's less than walnut, less than cherry. So basically, you would choose this wood if you were okay with the price and you were okay with how it looked. Now, what about white oak? So it has a couple of characteristics that set it apart from red oak. First, it's a little harder, a little heavier, but it's not too crazy. Second, and more distinctively, it's the color. The color of white oak is more of a saddle tan color. It's kind of a little more rugged, a little more tenacious looking. It just doesn't scream, kitchen built in 1992, the way red oak can look. And third, unlike red oak, white oak is actually a pretty good choice for outdoor projects. It can handle a lot of sun, it can handle a lot of rain, all without a bunch of rotting. So have you ever heard of the USS Constitution? It's the world's oldest naval vessel that's still afloat today, and it was built out of white oak. If you're ever near Boston, you can go check it out and actually take a tour. The USS Constitution is a ship that became known as Old Ironsides thanks to its reputation in the War of 1812. Basically, during a battle with the British Royal Navy, they were taking a pounding with cannonball fire, and yet the British couldn't break through the hull. And so the British declared that it must have been made out of iron, but in fact, it wasn't iron, it was white oak. Like red oak, don't be tricked by the name. The name white oak is really a description for the tree. The tree has this really light gray bark and it's called white oak because of that. Question I know you're just begging to ask is why would I pick white oak for my project? Basically, white oak is a little bit more expensive than red oak. However, it has a nicer look to it, I think. More tenacious, rugged, kind of tan color. A little heavier, a little harder. If you like the look and you're okay with the price, that's why you pick it. However, it's also our main recommendation if you want an affordable wood that you're gonna use outside, white oak is a great choice for that. So if red oak and white oak are like models under the brand oak, you might be wondering what's up with quarter sawn, flat sawn, rift sawn. What do those things mean? Those are basically like trim packages. Quick version is it that those are techniques for sawing a log and those techniques produce different grain patterns. Flat sawn produces one type of look, rift sawn produces another type of look, and quarter sawn produces another type of look. Let's cover those real quick. So the term flat sawn is synonymous with plain sawn. Maybe you've heard it like that before, but flat sawn, plain sawn, same thing. It's the fastest and the most economical way to saw up logs. And what it produces is kind of a wide grain pattern. Really easy to identify with these cathedral shapes that show up in the grain. They're kind of like giant U's 
or what they call cathedrals. This is flat sawn or plain sawn. In quarter sawn, we talked about in another video, it's just another way to cut up a log, okay? What that produces is really a lot of straight grain, but in the oaks, it also exposes the medullary rays right on the faces of the board. Quarter sawn oak, whether it's red or white, gives you these really cool patterns in the medullary rays as they pop out of the surface of the wood. That's what quarter sawing does. And then rift sawing is kind of like a cross between the two. You get really straight grain, but you don't get the really wild medullary rays poking out of the surface. So whether it's in red oak or white oak, the grain's just a little more subdued. You're gonna see this used a lot these days, particularly like really, really modern furniture pieces, modern interiors. They like using this. You get this really nice even color, really nice straight grain, it's cool stuff. But the unfortunate part about quarter sawing or rift sawing is that boards tend to be really narrow. It's just due to the technique on how you cut those logs up, the resulting boards tend to be pretty narrow. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Mark of Woodworker Source. We're your friendly hardwood lumber supplier, hopefully. <laughs> if you like what you saw here today, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. If you didn't like what you saw here, hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Mark. I'm from Woodworker Source. If you liked what you saw here, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.